Uh, okay, a couple of things have been going on that I've been watching, and um, it's just some ridiculous stuff going on in the news. And I'm going to talk about two subjects. Paris Hilton getting out of jail, because I don't really care about her, but I'm going to get a little thing I'll say about it. And then the Chris Benoit thing, because I'm a fan of wrestling. My short but sweet little thing to say about Paris Hilton is Paris, I don't give a crap about your uh, business the stuff that you do. I don't give a crap about what you do before all your partying and all that stuff because I'm not into that celebrity mumbo jumbo. I saw this thing on TV saying that you wanted to change and you go to God and then I saw afterwards you were in this Amsterdam smoking weed and on the beach and stuff. Do what you want to do, okay? Because you'll always be this character that people watch on TV and I hope you can break out of it, okay? I pray for you right now because this is the farthest I'll ever say anything about you. I pray right now that you change everything and everything about what you've done before and become a better person and be real with people. You want to help people? Great. God bless you. That's it. I'm not, you know, there was so much ridiculous stuff and people talk way too much about you and the ridiculous things. And So, God bless. Um, now, Chris Benoit. Wow. I mean, okay. For the first thing is that the lady named um, Sherry... Sherry Martell, I forget what her real last name is, I think it's Martell, but, uh, she was like one of, uh, like a legend, okay, she was given an award and everything for Hall of Fame and all this stuff, and a few days before Chris Benoit, she died, and I think it was really sad that it took his death for the people on the news and stuff to say anything about her, um, reason that because, you know, they covered a lot of other wrestlers, and there's a lot of them they still didn't, you know, I think that because all the media and all the stuff that they've done before, that they should be at least acknowledged on, like, one news channel, and not have to take something serious, like a double murder, suicide, or whatever, to get it noticed, okay, I can remember her back with Shawn Michaels, when she brought out the mirror, I can remember her when she was with Harlem Heat, a sister, sister Sherry, um, and, you know, just, maybe her fighting different, like, Luna and stuff, and she was a wrestler, and, you know, that was back when the wrestling women were cool and really wrestling women, not, she dressed, you know, in heavy makeup and stuff, but she wasn't out there, um, you know, getting boob jobs and putting in Playboy magazine and stuff. And then, so it's, I mean, wrestling for women is ruined, in my opinion. And any of them you find that are independent circuits, I, circuits are like, uh, I guess, mud wrestling things and stuff, and it's just sad how people will change with media. But Chris Benoit, um, people suddenly stop tributing him after they learn and everything and call him a monster and everything. Well, first thing one is the personal thing. I'm not like I'll say after this, but the, the character missed Chris Benoit will be missed. I mean, his character had the same name as he as his name, but was a great wrestler. Chris Benoit was one of the best dang wrestlers in, in this past history and you know compared he was up in the like top 100 he'd be up in the hop, upper one he was always really good he always it always looked when he did his work it always looked like a really great wrestling match it always came out nice there was no like mistakes with his his flying headbutt was one of the best moves and, and he went through a lot of stuff now personal Chris Benoit I do believe uh, that a lot of this came from the steroids. And this is a tragic, it's sad to show that I uh, see a tragic thing like this happen and then have to be, you know, blown out of proportion. And it's just because the medicine makes a person do that. And this shows you what abusing stuff can do. Now, if he was using the medicine for low testosterone, like they said he was. I can understand that, and then maybe he had an after effect, and it messed him up because he might have been allergic to it or something, or just had a bad symptoms from it. Um, you know, about I mean, after effects from it, whatever it causes from it, and you know that that stuff can happen because it has steroids in it. Mine has steroids in it, and not a little high amount of dose. But if I was to take too many of the patches I wear, then it would, because um, I wear those uh, androderm patches for my testosterone. And so, well, you know, but then they found all the other steroids in this house, I guess, and they're going after this doctor, and, you know, 
I know he's had problems with his kid, the Thragilex, and that was really sad that the kid had to go through that, but there was something about we're not hearing about this. I mean, what kind of, you know, the what ifs and stuff. So I think people should just quit worrying about it until we know everything, the full answer. They even said it won't be for a couple of weeks until we get the toxicology stuff back. So all I know is that three people are gone. Two are wrestling legends. I mean, they don't even mention woman. You know, his wife Nancy, because she was known as woman and different stuff. She was one of the, you know, good managers. She's one of the best stuff there. She went around with, uh, what was it, uh, I think it was Sandman and Raven. And, and she was in uh, WWE and WCW with Kevin Sullivan, her former husband. I mean, come on. They mentioned her as just his husband, his, his wife Nancy. And... You know, their son, he was down there before, is greeting his, you know, his dad hugged him and stuff, and he won the, his uh, championship belt, and the little boy, you know, no matter what disease a kid gets through, if you can't handle it, and you can't take care of that kid, you know, you need to get help, and then you gotta either help yourself, or get help for that kid, and not stress out, and, you know, if you fight all the time and have stress, there's something wrong, you know, no, duh, it's gonna be hard, the kid had a problem, it's gonna generate into more problems. But why the heck a fight with your spouse about it and then get violent or get upset and stuff and instead of just getting help or giving the kid to somebody that can help him. It's a terrible tragedy. I'm mad. And I'm mad because one, is it's just it was blown way out, all this stuff. And then there's this guy saying that he knew the death before it even happened. you know. And then he said it's a terrible coincidence. Yeah, right. Nobody puts in there the coincidence that quick for the 14 days, or no, 14 days, like 14 hours before all that stuff happens, someone like that, I forget. But, I mean, quit recording, worrying about the stuff until we get on the news and stuff. I'm tired of hearing people call people bad names and everything because that might not even have been him. It might have been the medicine that he took that made him go nuts. And even if he was doing all this stuff, that's their personal life. They, you know, he screwed himself, but that doesn't make his wrestling character a horrible person. Okay, his personal character, if he did all that stuff on purpose, was a horrible person, not his wrestling character. And if he didn't do this stuff on purpose, if it was all because of something that screwed him up, then I blame a lot of the stuff on the doctors and on Vince McMahon. Because Vince McMahon had pumped these wrestlers so full of steroids... And then I've heard that the steroids also cannot be traced if it's medicinal from a pharmacy. I heard that if you can get a doctor to get it for you, that's not going to come up on the lace, the, the the bad types of steroids. So, what makes you think that a, you know a billionaire couldn't get a good bunch of doctors and stuff to write stuff out? And they could. So he screwed them up. Then they were screwed up. So the doctors just fall into everything. And then it's his fault for taking them. Because I you know I know he wanted a job. And I know that you have to do a lot of crazy crap in that wrestling stuff to get a job. I mean, um, I, you know, I can't even imagine. I've heard so many things about it. Like, a friend of mine told me about Rowdy Rowdy Piper. When he started out as a teenager, he was at this one wrestling federation, I believe in Oregon. And it was a local thing. And then when the guy retired, Rowdy was in uh, WWF at the time, WWE now. And he uh, was owned by, you know, Titan Entertainment. He went to the federation that the, he came from when the guy was doing his last show on TV. And there was an empty stadium, I believe. And he said that he didn't come in through his theme music. He didn't come in in his clothes that he wore on the show. He had normal clothing, street clothes. He didn't even have his kilt on gave the guy a ticket stub and had every single seat bought as well and they, guess what happened Vincent Mann's company fired him yes did that tell you that they're good hearted billionaires no so people all I can say the terrible tragedy has happened um someone who got a someone's got out of prison who you know I'm glad she got to be put in there because she didn't deserve to stay out of it and that whole sick tirade was really stupid and I pray to God that no matter what happens that people just get over this stuff and learn from this as an experience to not abuse drugs especially steroids. God bless.